What is up guys, it is Nick, and we are here to do the early week breakdown for week one of the NFL season here on DraftKings. Now I will have a lineup builder for FanDuel coming up tomorrow. I'll do more of my game by game, or not game, my position by position breakdowns on DraftKings, and I'll do more lineup builders on FanDuel. <clears throat> if you hear me clear my throat, my allergies are bothering me a little bit today, so I have a little drink here. Just in case, but my throat's a little full um, today. But anyway, let's get into the positional breakdown here. So I'll be able to do this relatively quickly. There's a lot of guys that I'm just going to cross out. I'll cover them briefly, but overall there's a concise amount of players that I have interest in. Um, more of a cash game player. I do have a lot of thoughts on GPPs, um, but I rarely... I don't know. I rarely don't max energy GPPs. I might this week because I have a really concise quarterback core, which I really like. And so um, I'm considering it, but I haven't made a decision just yet. Anyways, let's hop into the quarterbacks. We have Tom Brady at the top at 7200 Most expensive quarterback by $300. And really, honestly, a pretty fair price for Tom Brady. Some weeks we get him at 7700 78 I believe we had a did we have an $8,200 week last week or last year, I think? So it's a fair price for Brady, and he's my top quarterback play on the slate. My issue comes is that I like so many people cheaper that I don't think I necessarily need to pay $7,200 for Tom Brady. If I max under GPPs, I will probably throw him in at 15, 10, 15%, maybe a little bit lower, maybe in the 8% range, but. I do really like him, and my second quarterback play on the slate is Cam Newton. I always love Cam Newton's rushing ability. If he can get you 40 yards on the ground or a touchdown, it mitigates some of the passing downside that he has compared to a Tom Brady. You know, if Cam rushes for 40 and a touchdown, it makes up for two Brady touchdowns through the air, uh, that type of thing. Um, I think Drew Brees will be better this year. People are talking about big bounce back year for Drew Brees. I don't really think that's the case. I still think they'll want to run it with Kamara and Ingram, though Ingram is out week one. We'll talk about that when we move on. But I, I just, for week one, I don't think I want to mess with Drew Brees. He's in a dome. I mean, he's in the dome. It, it's a good environment. No wind. It's good throwing environment. I don't know. I just, he's just, I, for 6,800... I would rather just go up to Brady or come all the way down to, to my cash game lock right now, which is Phillip Rivers. I just really like Rivers, but we'll touch on that in a second. Deshaun Watson is also someone I would play over Drew Brees. Um, until you get to Phillip Rivers, Watson is my third-ranked quarterback on the top end. I'm going to consider the top end 65 and above. Well, I don't necessarily love Deshaun Watson because I'm not entirely sure what the Patriots are going to do on defense. I need to look at it a little bit more. Um, as the week goes on, but they moved Jason McCourty back to safety. So they have Devin McCourty, Jason McCourty, and Patrick Chung, and Duran Harmon. They really like Harmon, so Harmon's going to play. So they got a four-man safety. I don't know if they're going to play Chung more in the box and let McCourty play strong safety, but strong safety outside the box, or what they're going to do there. The corner is interesting. You obviously have Stephon Gilmore, Eric Rowe, Jonathan Jones, and then undrafted rookies J.C. Jackson and Keon Crossan. I think they were undrafted rookies. Or, or no, wait. Crossan was drafted. J.C. Jackson was not drafted. And then they have, um, what's his name, Duke Dawson um, as well back there. So I'm not entirely sure what the Patriots are going to do in the secondary, so... Until I figure that out, I like Watson, but I don't think I'll play him. Because I think they'll double cover. They won't double cover. They'll put Stephon Gilmore on one-on-one -on -one coverage with Hopkins, with McCourty shading that way is my guess. Um, so I don't know if I want to mess with Deshaun Watson when he's only 500 cheaper than Brady and 200 cheaper than Cam. I, I, he provides a little rushing upside, but I, I probably won't go there. Um, Big Ben, home road splits are insane they're one of the craziest home road splits uh just last year he averaged 10 close to 10 
points different. And this is not a one-year sample size. This has been going on for, I think this, I think last year was the fourth year in a row that he was much, much worse at, or much, much worse on the road than he was at home. It was absolutely insane. Um, and I'm happy this includes this regular season because he did go nuts in that playoff game. Um, so it kind of skews things if it would have included it because he did go absolutely insane in the in the playoff game for five touchdowns. But point being is that is an incredible ch difference. And it's not like they were against like some world beater teams on the road. Cincinnati, Indy, one of the easiest matchups last year was Indy. They'll be one of the easiest matchups this year. Detroit. Kansas City's defense gives up. Kansas City's defense, as good as Marcus Peters was, he got beat a lot. And I just, I, they just gave up a lot of yards. And so, you know, his 12 points is not very good. Baltimore, Chicago, I mean, these aren't, like, some of them are bottom echelon defenses. And then some of them are all right. But there isn't, like, a Jacksonville. There's not. I believe, ja yeah, Jacksonville was at home both times, so it, it, there wasn't a Jacksonville, there wasn't a Denver at, on the road, there, there weren't any of those teams on the road, and so it's not like he was facing some world beaters out here, so I'm just not going to, why mess with it? I mean, yeah, he has upside on this slate to break it, but wh I, I just don't see the point at his price. I like Kirk Cousins, but I'm just going to play Phillip Rivers instead. I love Phillip Rivers' matchup. He gets a KC defense that was terrible last year against the pass with Marcus Peters. Peters just kind of masked some of their huge issues because he intercepted the ball a lot. Because he was, I mean, Marcus Peters gets all this recognition as a great corner because he intercepts balls. But he does get burned. He gets beat a lot for a star corner for what he what for what people treat him as as a star corner he gets beat a lot now he he kind of mitigates that with his ball skills but it doesn't really matter cuz he's not on the chiefs anymore but the point is the chiefs were bad last year against the pass they're going to be bad again this year and they lost their best corner so i love me some philip rivers he's always underpriced and, and so I'm playing him right now. Phillip Rivers is my cash game quarterback right now. And not that it would take a lot for me to go down, but I just, for 6400 that's too good of a price for, for Phillip Rivers, who I honestly think has four or five touchdown upside this week in a shootout, I believe, that they will have against Kansas City. Um, Mariota and Russell Wilson I have no real interest in. I think Russ will have to throw and improvise, but I don't really have any interest. I don't have any interest in Luck, or I have medium interest in Mahomes, but not really. He has, Mahomes has issues when he's pressured, um, and that's what the Chargers defense does is they pressure. I'm interested to see how they look without Jason Verrett, but they're still a pressure defense with Bosa and uh, Melvin Ingram, so I, I, I just don't have interest in Mahomes. I like Andy Dalton. But for 5,800, I'll just find the six to get the Phillip Rivers. That's where I'm at. I'm not playing Jimmy G. I'll talk about Andy Dalton later with him when I get to AJ Green. But I don't like Jimmy G against Minnesota. I'm not. I'm not playing Blake Bortles. I'm not playing. Not playing Alex Smith. That's a really good price on Alex Smith. I'm just not paying it. Playing it. Dak. I like Dak at 5,500. Him and Tyrod Taylor, are the guys that I would go dumpster diving for. I also like Case Keenum. Case Keenum and Ryan Fitz, Ryan Fitz tragic. I guess we can throw Joe, Joe Flacco. I'm not playing, but at 4900, that's not terrible. But Fitz tragic and Keenum are the last two guys I'll talk about. I don't really. People are acting like it's like a hot take news that oh Seattle's defense isn't good anymore. But if you know anything about football and you watched it, you you know Seattle isn't good. Like I don't get how people are, are acting like it's. It's like this new found thing that they're like, oh, people people still think the Seattle defense is really good. Let me get, let me give you this hot let me give you this take that, you know, they're not good and you could get a huge edge on the field. Like I don't even 
I can't imagine there are any intelligent, super intelligent football fans out there that still think Seattle's like this world-beating defense. I just, I did, I don't see it. It doesn't, it doesn't fit in my head that there are actually intelligent football fans out there that still think Seattle is a top-tier defense. They're just not. Now, that doesn't really make me want to play Case Keenum because I really like the Denver running back, and I'll get to him in a minute. But at 5,100, Case Keenum does not need to crush the world. He really just needs to get what what he averaged last year. And I think he can do it. Now, Fitz Tragic, no one likes playing Ryan Fitzpatrick, but they should be losing in this game. And it's in a dome. And I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not good. He's also not the worst quarterback to ever play football. I don't think 18 points is unreasonable for Ryan Fitzpatrick. If he gets three touchdowns, that's 12 points. If he finds his way to 300 yards because he's down and they have to throw the football, I don't think in some crazy universe we live in that Ryan Fitzpatrick could get to 300 yards and three touchdowns in a dome against a defense that is good, but it's not great. So... I am considering Ryan Fitzpatrick. I would probably just play Case Keenum instead. But Ryan Fitzpatrick is is viable. So to recap the quarterback position, these are really the only quarterbacks that I'm thinking about. Fitzpatrick, Keenum, um, maybe a little Dak. I, I'm still not sure about that one. Andy Dalton, Phillip Rivers, Tom Brady, and Cam Newton. Moving on to the running back position. Le'Veon Bell still yet to sign his franchise tag, and for a guy that loves money as much as he does and is concerned about money as much as he is, which I don't blame him for, the NFL is not a guarantee, get your money while you can, but my point is, is I doubt he's out on Saturday, I mean, he's got, it doesn't make any sense to me that he sits out and misses out on his game check that's worth close to a little over a million dollars, something like that, his game check is worth like something over a million dollars, Point is, I don't think he sits out, but I don't think you can play him. Because he he hasn't signed yet, which means he didn't practice today, which means his first practice will be f- Wednesday, and they have already expressed opinions that they're not happy with him. They're not happy with him at all. And so, oh, that's a new snippet of news that I didn't see today. At 6.12 p.m. How does that even make any sense? Okay, okay. Look at the bottom of my screen. That's 4.30. And it says... It says September 4th at 6.12 p.m. Eastern. That's not for another two... What? Come on. Come on, Rotowire. That doesn't make any sense. But... Coach Tomlin indicated Tuesday that he hasn't thought about a cutoff day that might determine Bell's Week 1's availability... When he gets here, that's when we'll start qual- quantifying all Le'Veon Bell-related stuff. So they haven't ruled a day, which isn't very helpful to us, but they haven't ruled a day that they'll cut him off at. And this is the biggest thing for Week 1. But last year in Week 1, he saw only 13 touches. He was targeted six times out of the backfield. So he was given 16 opportunities in Week 1, which compared to any other week of the regular season except for Chicago except for Chicago, right? Uh, yeah, except for Chicago is like 10 behind anything. The Chicago one, it's like 6 behind. But everything else, he got like 25-plus opportunities every game. And in close competitive games with high scoring, he was approaching the 30s, 40s, not 40s. He was approaching the 30-plus opportunities. So... Would temper your expectations for week one, and for 9,400, I will not be playing Le'Veon Bell no matter if he plays or not. I I think a lot of people will jam him in, and I think it's a mistake. They're not happy with him. They didn't play him much last year, coming off almost the exact same scenario. And so, at 9,400, I just think we can leave Le'Veon Bell out. I really like David Johnson this week, but I'll probably save him for GPPs unless we are giving an exact amount of carries they want to give him. If they say they're going to look to give him 20 plus carries, I'll play him in cash. 
But if I don't get that news, I can't play him over some of the other options because they're working him back from injury. Now, I'll love to play Dajun Johnson later in the season, especially once we get to see exactly what they're going to do with him coming back. Week one, I might do a GPP lineup with David Johnson because I like him so much, but for cash games, I don't think I have to go there. Alvin Kamara, chalk, should be chalk. I guess should be. I don't know if he'll actually be chalk, but Alvin Kamara, no Mark Ingram. Now, they signed Mike Gillisley, but I don't think Gillisley's going to steal like a million carries or anything like that. Now, I don't think Alvin Kamara... Um, is going to touch the ball a bunch. Like, he averaged somewhere between, you know, 14 to... Was it 14 to, like, 20, 20, care, 20, 20 opportunities a game? Somewhere roughly around that. And so, I don't think he'll get up to, like, a bell cow, 20 carries and 9, re, nine targets type game. I think he'll get better opportunities, but I still think Mike Gillisley will carry the ball eight times, maybe four in the red zone type deal. And so to expect Kamara to have a Le'Veon Bell type workload, I think is a little ridiculous, but I still think he's pretty much a lock for week one, let's be honest. Moving on, I really like Ezekiel Elliott. Um... There's no wide receivers in Dallas. I mean, there's obviously wide receivers in Alan Hearns and whatnot, but point is, is I think Ezekiel Elliott will get a little bit more looks in the passing game this year. I'm not sure I love him against Carolina's run defense, but I think he gets more opportunities in the pass game. We can move our way down here. I do like Kareem Hunt and Melvin Gordon. I, I think this game shoots out, so I really like them, but I won't be heavily targeting them because um, I like guys farther down. Um, Saquon Barkley, I don't have any interest in in week one. You could play him, but I just I just don't have any interest. We got to go all the way down here to Alex Collins is the first guy that I like. Um, has two touchdown upside. He's more of a fan duel play for me than a DraftKings because he doesn't catch the ball all that much. Um, and a lot of his equity comes when he scores touchdowns, which is a huge thing on fan duel. Uh, so I'll probably reserve Alex Collins for a fan duel, but I do really like him. Uh, moving down the list here, we got to go way down here. And our first guys come in at the $4,500 range. I guess 46 I do kind of like Matt Burita, but he's more GPP than he is cash. Um, no Jarek McKinnon. Should be a little bit of a divide in San Francisco on carries. So we'll see how that shapes out. It's probably more of a week two play than it is a week one because we don't really know what they're going to do. But the guys that I really like come in at the 4,500 range. That's James Conner if Bell is out. Now don't expect James Conner to be Le'Veon Bell and get that type of workload. I think, what is it, Jalen Samuels? Is Jalen Samuels their other running back? I just know they have... Yeah, Jalen Samuels. I expect it to be like a um, 60 to 65% split to 40% to split type of deal there. Um, I don't expect um, uh, James Conner to get the, the massive workload, but I, I still think he's a good week one play at 4,500 if Le'Veon Bell sits out. My favorite play... In this range is Rolls Royce, as he was known in Oregon. Royce Freeman, he got announced as the starter yesterday, I believe. And I think he has a huge game here against Seattle. Um, at 4,500 on DK, I really like him. Now, I'm not sure exactly who I'm going to play out of this range. Him or Connor. Or there's another guy a little bit cheaper that we're going to talk about. But I do really like Royce Freeman. Um, it's grown on me over the past little bit I was not gonna play him because I was like eh well what if he doesn't do so hot to start are they just gonna put in are they gonna put in um Devontae Booker and just kind of you know save and just move on and let's go back to Royce Freeman later um type deal and try to win this game and then we'll we'll try to work Royce in next week that type of thing and do I really want to bet my money on him week one 
Um, I'm still kind of on the fence there. I'm not entirely sure. Kind of same deal with Chris Carson. Um, he's got other guys around him, so I'm not entirely sure what I want to do there. Uh, and then the final cheap guy that I have interest in is Rex Burkhead at 4200 And this is contingent on Sony Michelle being limited or out. Right now, it's murky whether or not he'll play, so we'll have to wait till later in the week, and I'll discuss it then. But no, for now, if Burkhead uh, will be in my lineups if Sony Michelle sits, because that just leaves James White for passing downs and Jeremy Hill, who I'm not sure what they're going to do with Jeremy Hill. I'm sure he'll get one catch and five carries or something like that, because the Patriots like to make it difficult. He'll probably score two touchdowns, and Rex Burkhead will have 15 carries, but he won't score a touchdown. Uh, one final note I wanted to make at running back is about Dalvin Cook. Temper your expectations on Dalvin Cook. Uh, Minnesota seems to be a little bit more progressive eh, with their coaching and players. Um, I could very, very, very easily see Dalvin Cook be eased in so he's not worn out. This is a team, you know, wants to win the Super Bowl. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they just ease Dalvin Cook back in and don't rush him back um because it's a big thing with uh with freshmen or not freshmen <laughs> with the rookies that they get tired near the end of the season he didn't play a full season he didn't have did he have i don't even know if he, i don't want to misspeak i don't believe he got full off season reps i know he was good for the preseason but i don't think he had full full off season reps but i could be wrong on that it doesn't matter either way the point is is that Rookie running backs tend to wear down, and technically he's still a rookie. He didn't play all 16 games last season, so temper your expectations on them. I, I, I think Minnesota will ease him back in. Moving on to wide receiver. At the top end, if Le'Veon Bell sits out, I love my I love me some Antonio. Give me all the Antonio Brown if Le'Veon Bell is out. Um, I don't know if I'll play him in cash games, but point is give me all the, the Antonio Brown and GPPs if Le'Veon Bell sits. I love me some DeAndre Hopkins, but the Patriots love to take away number one wide receivers. Now, DeAndre Hopkins had a very pretty, very good game against the Patriots. Um, or not very good, but he went eight for 76. If he found the end zone, it would have been a huge game, but he didn't find the end zone. But point is, if he finds the end zone, it's 20, and it's DeAndre Hopkins. He probably finds the end zone against the Patriots, let's be honest. I probably stepped out off the top tier. Um, Michael Thomas is in a dome, but I just don't love him as much as I like Keenan Allen and A.J. Green. Um, Keenan Allen is my favorite receiver on this slate. There is a guy at 3,700, I believe. I do really love him, but Keenan Allen is my favorite receiver. I like pairing him up with Phillip Rivers in cash games. It, it, I think they have a huge game together. Now, the Chargers have a few more options this year. They have Keenan Allen, Tyrell Williams, Mike Williams, um, Travis Benjamin, Antonio Gates. I mean, they have options, Gordon, but I think Keenan Allen is going to get his 10 targets, and if he can find that end zone, it's going to be huge. Um, I do really like Keenan Allen for week one. I would have liked him a little bit cheaper, maybe 71, 7K, but 75 I can pay. I love A.J. Green this week against Indy. I love pairing him up with Andy Dalton, but as of right now, I have Keenan Allen and A.J. Green in my cash lineup. I don't like a lot of the rest of these guys here. Uh, definitely not playing Odell Beckham Jr. against Jalen Ramsey. That's just not happening. Um, and then I'm not a huge fan of any of these guys. I'd rather just pay up. The next guy I have interest in is Chris Hogan here. Should see double-digit targets, I would think, with no Edelman and a really thin receiving court. Now, the Patriots signed Chad Hansen and Julian... <laughs> Chad Hansen and Amaro Darbo. Um, Hansen was with the Jets, and Darbo was with the Seahawks. I know much more about Darbo because he played at Michigan than I do about Hansen, but I know Hansen is a speedster. Darbo is more of a possession, uh, well-rounded receiver. Doesn't really matter. I don't think they play much week one because of the lateness of their signing. Chris Hogan at 6,100, one of my favorite plays on the slate. I think he's a lock on FanDuel. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with him on DK, but I do really like him on DK. Moving down here, I like Demarius Thomas, but I really think the guy that you want to play from the Broncos is Emmanuel Sanders. D 
DT is the number one receiver, but I think Emmanuel Sanders will be the number one through targets and receptions this year. I think he has a big year, and I think he has a big game here against Seattle. At 5K, I do really like him. Right now, he's not in my cash lineup, but he's easing his weight closer. Moving on down here, we will talk about the Jacksonville receivers in just a moment. There's not much else down here that I'm in love with, except if you go all the way down, all the way down here, you get Philip Dorsett at 3,700. Now, if you look at the Patriots receiving core, you've got Gronk and Dwayne Allen as the tight ends. I think Dwayne Allen catches some more balls in this game, but Dwayne Allen wasn't really used as a pass catcher last year. So you have Gronk, you have Chris Hogan, you got Philip Dorsett, Cordero Patterson, and the two receivers Darbo and Hanson that I just named. Philip Dorsett looked decent last year in his limited attempts. He's 3,700. I'm not sure you need to go there in cash games, but Philip Dorsett is one of my favorite players on this entire slate. Everybody is thinking about Hogan and Gronk. Dorsett is kind of an afterthought, but if you think about it, there's not too many other options, and Brady has a rapport with Philip Dorsett. They kept Philip Dorsett as their number two wide receiver for the first four weeks for some reason. They didn't sign any crate. They didn't sign a Des Bryant. They cut Eric Decker. They didn't keep any of these bigger named, quote unquote, bigger named free agents. They didn't keep or sign any of them to be a number two wide receiver until Julian Edelman, Edelman gets back. No, they rolled with Philip Dorsett, which means I, which means Bill Belichick believes in Philip Dorsett. So that means I believe in Philip Dorsett. Moving on to Chalk City of the Week, that would uh that'd be our boys D.D. Dee Dee Westbrook and Keelan Cole. It looks like Keelan Cole is going to be the heavy chalk, which makes D.D. Dee Dee Westbrook my favorite of the options. I probably will play Keelan Cole in cash, and this is kind of the stupid thing is just play Keelan Cole. Why am I playing Philip Dorsett over Keelan Cole? Just eat the chalk and play Keelan Cole in cash and, you know, move on. So that if Keelan Cole explodes for you know, nine catches for 160 yards and two touchdowns, and I'm sitting over there with Philip Dorsett, I'm not just dead in the water. But I will have GPPs with Philip Dorsett. That's my point. I like D.D. Westbrook more. If it didn't sound like Keelan Cole was going to be, you know, 60% owned and D.D. Westbrook at, like, 30%, I would just play D.D. Westbrook. But sometimes in cash, when it's close, because I think they're close, you just play the chalk. Just eat the chalk, especially in football. You don't want to lose your cash. I have plenty of places to be different. I don't think Philip Rivers will be crazy owned or anything like that. So I have places to be different. Just eat the chalk with Keelan Cole. Don't let Keelan Cole beat you. That's kind of where I am at this point of the week. So it's a pretty tight court wide receiver for me. It's AJ Green, Keenan Allen, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins. I'll sprinkle in a little Tyree Kill. Chris Hogan, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Keelan Cole, uh, D.D. Westbrook, and Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett is my favorite play of the week. I just don't think I can stomach playing him in cash. If he just sucks in cash, I don't... It would just be so tilting if he was terrible in cash. I might consider playing him in cash with Keelan Cole. I might do a Dorsett Cole in order to play Rob Gronkowski, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Gronk, obviously the top tight end on the board. Him and Kelsey, clearly above everybody else, and just Olsen's price is weird. I either want to play for Gronk, or I... If I play max entry GPPs, I will only have two tight, two tight ends, I think. I will go Gronk, and I will go Jordan Reed. That's about the end of it. If you're not going to... If Jordan Reed is good to go, which... His toe is bothering him. I think he'll be good to go. Point is, if he's good to go at 4K, I gotta play Jordan Reed. If he gives me a zero, he gives me a zero. But it's Jordan Reed at 4K. If you're not gonna play Jordan Reed now, when are you gonna play him? He also has Alex Smith, who loved to target Travis Kelsey. So, I, I just can't get off of Jordan Reed. I just can't do it. And it's, it's pretty much as simple as that for me. It's Jordan Reed or it's Rob Gronkowski. I'll talk about defense real quick. I really like the Seahawks. Or the... <laughs> I really like the Jaguars. I was I saw the C... It doesn't matter. 
I really like the Jaguars, and they're actually pretty easy and affordable to fit. So I don't really have a problem playing them. They're in my cash game right now. And last year, if you look at their box score, they never got you negative. And rarely did they get you less than like eight. Oh, they got negative once against Tennessee when Tennessee cooked them in week two. But realistically, more than half the time, they got you double digits. They even got you they even got you 8 points in a game they got they gave up 42 to the Steelers. They got you 8 in a game where they gave up 42. So against Eli Manning and once if they can take away Odell with just Jalen Ramsey, which I think they can, and Boye can eliminate another there's going to be nowhere for Eli to go with the ball. So I really like the Jags. If you need some savings as of right now in the week, it depends. If if Andrew Luck plays, I don't like the the Bengals. If he doesn't play, I'll play the Bengals. Otherwise, I'm probably going to like Buffalo down here. Or I might just go with the straight up all out, punt it into the dirt. Cleveland Browns at $2,000. If I'm not going, if I'm not going the Jags, I'm coming all the way down the good old Cleveland Browns. I think I, I actually think the Browns win this week. I think they beat the Steelers. So I guess I'm going all the way down to 2K to the Browns defense. I mean, the worst thing that happens is you lose. They suck and they get you zero points. I don't think they're going negative this week, but if they get you zero points, they get you zero points. Yeah. yeah. But it lets you spend up because you $1,700 over... Uh, over the Jags defense, so it'll probably come down to Browns or Jags for me, but that's going to do it for the week one breakdown, guys. I hope you all enjoy it. In the next one, tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. We'll do the FanDuel lineup builder. I have some different thoughts over there. Um, and then we'll come back. We'll hit it on Friday, Saturday with some more FanDuel and DraftKings talk before the weekends. And so I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Peace out.